The Tibetan Photo Project started in 2000 when myself and Joe McGee, we sent cameras over to a monk in exile and he gave us back a wonderful view of his world and it was a view that uh, as a Western culture we've never seen. There's so many photographs out there that the Westerners have taken that show um, what the world looks like there from our point of view, but there would never been anything from the monks themselves, from their point of view. And in fact, when the cameras were first received by this monk, the first thing he said was they had no culture based on photography. He wasn't sure what he should show us. So the first photos back were very stoic and very posed because they thought that's what they were supposed to do. And over time they realized they could just loosen up and be themselves and that that's what we wanted. And as a result, we received a view into a window that has never been seen before. We're the forerunners on this. We're the first who have ever brought this back to, um, to others to see. Uh, I've gone from, you know, we took those photos, I went with that and did the website for us for the project and took it from being just the gallery shows that we have which are phenomenal and everyone should see if it's in your area, but I've taken it so that an even wider audience can see it. It's on, you know, the world page at this point. You know, everyone can see it if you go to our website, the TibetanPhotoProject.com. Um, we've had Parade Magazine review us. They said they find it rewarding, which, you know, is really about as good as you can get. Um, and they're, they're taking the article and writing the article about us brought us about 40,000 hits to the website that particular day and it got us noticed and got us attention from China, from the People's Republic, from the UN. Um, so you can tell when you get that sort of activity on a site of that, with that type of content, people listen and people want to know what's going on and what you're showing them. Um, We've, we've been very blessed with what we've received and we've met some great people. We have a gentleman over there that basically just through the luck and belief that he was honest in who he was and integrist, uh, we sent him a camera, we sent him money to purchase a computer, and he did a documentary film uh, showing us again what he wanted us to see of the life in exile. And it's a phenomenal film. It's been reviewed and been viewed in many uh, film festivals, including both Tibetan festivals, Canadian festivals, and festivals in the United States. And then we've taken, also Joe's gone over, and I'm hopeful to go over with him again next year. And, but he's shot footage, and we've incorporated that into basically how we became the Tibetan Photo Project and where we're hoping to go with this. And again, it's, it's been very enlightening to those who've seen it. Uh, it's been personally a very enriching thing to do. Um, we, we tend to get wrapped up in our own worlds. Um, I do acting and modeling. I'm an assistant director. You can get very locked into what you do. And it's wonderful to go out and share, share part of yourself and what you're doing with other people. And the Tibetans are a culture that is so important. And they're such a wonderful people that it's a shame to just let that go away. And if China was given their free reign to do what they wanted, it, they would go away. They would no longer be with us. They'd be, they'd be an, uh, an extinct you know, culture. And we can't let that happen. St. Mary College in Shreveport, Louisiana, and Antioch College, which has one of their campuses in uh, Los Angeles. Both of these colleges have uh, assisted in creating gallery uh, exhibits of the photos from the Tibetan Project. And we currently have those exhibits, those two independent exhibits, available to go out to other galleries and uh, other colleges. When these two colleges did, did their particular showings, um, the photos were shown in six cities within the United States. So it was a wonderful exhibit. A lot of people got to see what, what we were coming up with with these images and we're excited to get these gallery shows placed in other galleries and or with other colleges within this year so that we can keep sharing what's going on over there and the great images that, we're, that are coming out of that area. The Tibetan Photo Project is creating a voice for the Tibetans in exile through their photos. And so every time these photos are seen, be it on the website, be it through the gallery showings or through the different slideshows and lectures we do using these photos, their story is told. Within the Tibetan Photo Project, the images that we are receiving, all of these are from the Tibetans' point of view. It's all from their eye, as opposed to the Western eye. We give them no direction as far as what they should shoot, only that they should share with us what they want to, what they want us to see. 
because all these images are from their point of view, um, it's been the first collection of its kind to, uh, to ever be done. And the media, both print, television, radio, are picking up on this and, and are very excited about it. They've never seen anything like this. So as a result, the, again, their voice is being shared with many, many people all over the world. The next goal for the Tibetan Photo Project is the Tibetan Photo Project Filmmakers Education Centers in India. And what we want to do with that is we want to set up hopefully five different centers where we have the computers with the uh, programs on them that can be used to edit films as well as the cameras so that the Tibetans can go in, they can check out a camera, they can go out and shoot their own documentary type films, they can come in, they can learn the process of how to edit the films. We are in contact with a Tibetan over there that is um, very well schooled and educated in filmmaking, so we're hopeful that he will come on board as one of the instructors for this. And ultimately what we would do is we would turn these centers over to the Tibetans. And the reasoning behind this is we realize that though we're doing what we can right now, eventually we need to be able to pass this to someone else. And who we want to pass it back to is the Tibetans and allow them to continue to keep sharing their voice and sharing their story through their own um, photos and documentaries that they're producing and putting out there so that their voice will not be forgotten and that they will be heard.